Hey guys, Joey. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to harvest uh, pods in the uh, phytoplankton. This is using the Poseidon uh, reef system. So far this system's been pretty awesome for me. I've had it a couple weeks now and I've had, I think, uh, about three harvests. I've gotten tons, tons of pods and you'll, you'll see those today, how many pods I get out of there. So, a couple things that you'll need. Uh, you'll need just some kind of, I don't know, bowl or other container. You'll need some fresh salt water. I wouldn't recommend two dogs. Uh, because they just want to fight. So if you can avoid that, go go and do that. Uh, they come with this little sieve, and then I took this little bucket. This is actually what my pond matrix came in. Cut a hole in the top, and then this goes right in there. Uh, then this is what I use to actually put the pods into, and you'll see that. And then you have, of course, your regular equipment um, that you'll need for the phytoplankton your fertilizer, A and B, your tubes, and you're gonna need some rubbing alcohol and just some cotton stuff. You wanna make sure everything's as sterile as possible. So the first step that we're gonna need to take is what we have here is we have the pods on the right and then uh, Fido on the left. So we're gonna start with the pods. I'm gonna fill up uh, this container with a little bit of water. And there's a little mesh pouch, the pod kind of hotel that they they go in. And I'll place that into that container. Okay, I got my bowl of water. So then what we do, we just twist off the top. And I kind of uh, dip these guys a couple different times to get as many into uh, the tank water as I possibly can. Give it a couple squeezes. We'll put that right in there. It's actually starting to get uh, pretty dirty now, so I'll probably give this uh, one more culture, and then I'll clean this sponge off pretty good. All right, from here it's fairly simple. I'm just going to uh, pour the pot container here into the sieve, and then we'll strain them out. detritus in there so it's straining a little bit slower than it normally does. What you can do is just take a little eyedropper, move all the debris around so it drains a little bit faster. They're all uh, poured in there now. I'll just wait for that to drain the rest of the way. And you can just take this bag and you can just throw this in the trash. Of course when I'm trying to film this, this is the slowest it's ever drained for me because there's the most debris in this batch. And let me show you kind of what it looks like. You should be able to see all the tiny pods that are moving. All those movements you see kind of speckling there. Tons and tons of pods. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll reverse the sieve and pour them into this little plastic container. Found the easiest way, you just take a measuring cup or something, get some water, take these guys, pour them over your sieve, or sorry, your container, and then just pour the water through. I'm going to take uh, this bucket that I have, I'll empty that, put this top back on because we're going to have to sieve them again. You can see all of those different pods in there. And this is about a week. This is only a week's worth. And like I did say, this is my third or fourth culture now. So there are a lot of adults living in there. And I tried to clear them out as good as, good as I could uh, last harvest. but. I guess I still had a, a lot. So since it's been a, a couple of harvests now, uh, definitely you want to clean the inside of 
this container. So we'll just take some rubbing alcohol and make sure everything's nice and clean on the inside. It's really about keeping everything as, as clean as you can uh, to avoid crashes. I haven't had any crash yet, but I'm sure I will now that I've said that. Now if your cocoa pod culture crashes, that seems that seems a little unlikely to me that your whole culture would crash. However, your phytoplankton, they're a lot more susceptible to crashing. So it's even more important to keep those guys nice and clean. And then once that's all dried out, you can go ahead and stick a new bag in there. One thing I didn't mention to you guys that I actually do is I actually wipe my hands off with the alcohol before. I wouldn't recommend it if you have a lot of cuts on your hands, uh, cause that'll hurt. So don't do that. Once you get the new bag in there, uh, you can fill it up about halfway and then we'll go back to the sponge. So now that we have that all sorted out, get all those nice pods out of there, and then this will just go and sit back in the, the new water. And then what we're gonna do on this container is we're gonna go and run it through the sieve again. And I'm gonna do that in the sink because this bowl doesn't pour very well. You can really see all that hair algae that's collected in there. So now that we have our pots right here, we have our little uh, hotel back in the container with the fresh salt water. Now we're ready to move on to harvest the phytoplankton. Starting off what I do for the phytoplankton is I'll clean out the container that I just poured all the pods into. And then I'll go ahead and take some rubbing alcohol and sterilize it. So once that's dry, the container is dry, then we'll just go over to the phyto tank here. This guy off. We're just gonna take this whole container and dump it right into the bucket. Harvesting the phyto is comparatively a lot more simple. Once again, we're just gonna take this bag, completely remove it, and then I'll go ahead and clean off this container the same way we did for the pots. While I wait for that container to dry off, we now have the phytoplankton in here, so we're gonna pour some into the coke pot culture so those guys can eat. We're gonna to wanna to pour, I don't know, we already have this filled up halfway, so we can go about halfway with pouring these in here as well. There's a little line that you have to fill up to, a little trident here, and we're about at that line. I'm just gonna give it another cup of fresh salt water. And we still have plenty of phyto remaining. This will be about a, a green tea color or so. Well, we're not gonna close it up just yet because uh, we're gonna sterilize the top of the lid in here right before we close it up. And we'll do that at the same time we do the other one. Here's our fresh Fido container. And we're gonna go ahead and fill that up about halfway. Okay, I filled it about three quarters full because that last batch was a little, little filthy. So what I'm gonna try to do is kind of reset things in a way to, to get them a little bit cleaner. So I'll take that fresh batch we had and we'll just pour it in up until it hits the Trident fill line. The rest of it, goes in this little old DRS um, ROX carbon container. You'll see I have almost enough to fill up that whole thing. So that'll last me quite a while for uh, the tanks. I just kind of dump it in. I don't ever measure this stuff. I just dump it in until I'm satisfied. And I just throw this in the fridge. It only has been lasting me about a week, so Every new new batch I get some, some fresh Fido. So we're not quite done here, setting everything back up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, take off this old tubing and then we're gonna add uh, some fresh tubing and then clean up the inside of these rims. And just for fun, I wipe off the, uh, the tubing as well. Now comes the lids. I think this is the biggest point of where these things can fail is the condensation that happens from the lids. Uh, over time, this can be exposed to uh, potential mold or things like that since there's a lot of humidity and it gets a lot of light. You give the phyto a lot more light than you give the cocoa pots. You also give them a lot more air, so it's a lot more susceptible uh, to uh, bacteria growing 
and mold developing things along, along those lines. Um, so you definitely want to get this clean. I kind of give it a double wipe down, let it dry, and then I'll move over to the pod harvest here. Last thing we have to do is take our fertilizer. We're going to do two milliliters in the little eyedropper here of each. And it doesn't really need to be exact, just get it pretty close to the two. And this wasn't quite full when I got it, it was up to about here. So this is, like I said, my maybe fourth or fifth time making these. I use the same eyedropper, I'm not sure if that's best practice, but that's what I do. Once you have that in, you just take your top, stick it back on, nice and tight, and that's done there. Same thing on the couple pots. Now in your phytoplankton, you're gonna have a lot more bubbles like I was explaining, and now a lot less bubbles in the copal pod and that's just due to the requirements that's what it says on the little uh, thing that it gives you also you're going to have the light setting on about half it comes with a dimmer so you can control that and then these little valves uh, control the airflow so you can adjust that uh, with about a week you might need to top this off and they they recommend keeping it at that fill line right there uh, other than that uh, there's not really much to this. This just kind of sits here. And I'll have to relocate this off the kitchen counter eventually. Because uh, I'm sure I'm going to get in trouble for continuing to have it here. And at this point, uh, this, this video is taking me forever. Because uh, it's harder to film things and talk through it. Normally this is going to take me anywhere between 15 and 20 minutes. It just depends. I'm, I'm typically slower and I take my time doing stuff like this. Um, once you have everything harvested, uh, we come back here, we have our phyto, nice and dark. Uh, one last thing to mention about this as well, the lights aren't on so you can't really tell, but you might be able to, is your phyto will start significantly lighter than your copepod culture. And what's going to happen is these are going to reverse. So as the copepods eat up all that phyto, this will become clear, and that's how you know you're you're pretty much ready to harvest is when it's clear and you can see the pods all over the glass. And then this will continue to darken up as uh, more phytoplankton grows. So the last thing that we have to do, take these guys and dump them into the tank. And I mean, I don't know if you guys could really see how many pods are in here. They're everywhere. I mean, what is it, Algae Barn offers, what, 5280 pods or something for, I don't know, 30 bucks. This whole system cost me 150, because I got it on sale. And I've already had, like I said, about four different harvests. So, you know, if you think about it, if that's my, you know, fourth harvest, and let's just say I'm, I'm harvesting at least 5,000 pods in there, I probably think it's more. I mean, you're already at, at 30, to, let's just call it five, five harvests. You know, 30 times five, you're at $150 worth of pods alone if you were to buy them off Algae Barn or something. So it's already almost paid for itself. And that's just, I'm just counting the pods, not the phytoplankton that I get as well, uh, which you would need to, you know, dose to your tank. And, you know, people buy things like uh, the Reef Nutrition uh, phytoplankton, and that gets really expensive too. So the last real step, uh, before I end this video and clean everything up is I'm just going to dump in these pods right into the tank. Um, hair algae and all, I guess. And the clownfish are actually uh, picking them off a little bit. They're eating them. The tank is definitely still cloudy. It's been cloudy for a while. It got clear and then it just went back to being cloudy. Um, I don't really know why. Just new tank syndrome, really. So I'm not, not worried about it. What I thought was interesting is you could actually see the difference in the pH, monitoring the pH of this tank. So it was at 7.8, and then when it started to get cloudy at its peak, it went down to about 7.6. And so you could see that it was consuming, there's some kind of bacteria bloom that was consuming more of the oxygen. 
and that was driving the CO2 levels up, which was bringing the pH down. So it was pretty interesting to see. Anyways, guys, that is how you harvest the Poseidon reef systems, phytoplankton and copepods. It's definitely worth it. You're going to save a ton of money. And if you have uh, stuff like uh, mandarins or gobies, any kind of sand sifters, I mean, urasses, all your fish, really, they love these pods. I have to adventure off, maybe get another tank, and then try to do some other pods. These are all Tisby pods. So I want to do something a little bit more challenging and see how that works out for me, and then kind of get a more diverse culture of pods in here. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe, and follow me on my Reef to Reef thread. I put a lot of exclusive content on there that I don't put on YouTube or stuff that I uh, put on there first before I bring it over to YouTube and actually make videos on there. And I think what I'm gonna start doing is releasing my videos to Reef to Reef first and putting them as private. And then if you are watching my thread over there, you'll be able to go and uh, watch everything kind of before it comes out on YouTube. So we'll see how that works out for me. Anyways, guys. I'll catch you on the next one.